Hey guys, it's Jensen, and today we're going to be talking about City of Bones by Cassandra Click. So I feel like City of Bones was really popular across booktube about 10 years ago, and I remember a lot of my friends reading it. Just um, It was just popular among the audience that likes to read young adult. But I have never read these books. I started this book in high school. I got about 50 pages in. I don't remember anything. I did see the movie, but I don't remember anything. So I came into this fairly blind. Um, I didn't know much to expect, but I started this channel because I'd always had this idea of going back and reading popular books I've never read before, like The Raven Boys and Throne of Glass and Percy Jackson. I just thought um, it would be fun to go back, read those books that I've never read and share that with people because I personally like watching reaction videos and listening to podcasts where someone is reacting to something that I love for the first time. It makes me feel like I am experiencing it again for the first time. So that's partially why I started this channel and I am really excited to get to a lot of those books that I've been to for years. I'm really excited to continue on with this series. Of course, I will be reading the whole series as well as the Infernal Devices and the other uh, other books in uh, written by Cassandra Clare. So if you would like to follow me along on my journey reading these books for the first time, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you would like to be notified about when I post these videos. So a couple disclaimers. First, I will be going into full spoiler territory. Um, I will be discussing this book in depth, but before I do that, I will give just a general review of my thoughts on the book. If you haven't read this before and you're curious if you should pick it up, I will give a brief review and then warn you when I'm getting into spoiler territory. Second of all, I recognize that this book is beloved by many, and it is not my intention to purposely bash on something that people love. I know that I personally hate watching videos or whatever when someone is bashing on a book that I love. It's not fun. And we're here to have fun. So at the same time, I do need to speak about this critically uh, while still talking about it lovingly. It's a fine line, but don't worry. I'm not going to be ranting about a book that you love. Also in full disclosure, I totally stole this idea from Channel Awesome series of videos Tamara's never seen, except in those videos she watches popular movies she's never seen. I'm obviously going to be reading popular books. Um, all right, with all that out of the way, let's get to it. So as a general review, before we get into spoilers, I really enjoyed this. According to Wikipedia, this is Cassandra Clare's first published novel, and as a first novel, it's quite impressive. Um, the writing is very competent, although there are lines and sections of dialogue that did make me cringe or roll my eyes, but it wasn't over the top and it wasn't too much. More often than not, I, I found it very re readable and engaging. It has a great sense of humor and <laughs> I was laughing several times out loud. Um, I really liked the characters and I thought the struggles that they went through were really interesting and I'm excited to uh, continue on their journey with them. Um, the fantasy and magic systems were a little bit weird and confusing, but I think towards the end I got the hang of it, but it definitely is a little bit weird and confusing. And yeah, really liked this. I would give it a three out of five stars. If you are someone who likes reading YA and you're looking for something that is fun, very readable, maybe a little bit um, predictable, but it still kept me guessing a lot of the time, I recommend you check it out. Now, full spoilers. So if you do not want to get spoiled, then click away now. So the book starts out with Clary and Simon going to a club, which after getting to know their characters, I feel like a club is a little bit not their scene, but whatever. Um, and we, I liked that we got multiple points of view. We got Clary and Simon going into the club, and then we got another point of view, which turned out to be the demon. 
that uh, Jason, Isabel, and uh, Alec were all pursuing, which when I started this book, I thought that was going to be Jace's point of view, or I didn't know what the main male character's name was, but I figured it was going to be his point of view, and he was the one being hunted down, and I thought it was a really cool way to play on my expectations by having it turn out to be the demon and the thing that the main male and his and his sidekicks were actually hunting. So I, yeah, I liked that. And then Clary, we get, we sort of get a first sense of her selflessness and courage because she goes after this guy who she doesn't know to make sure that he's okay because she notices that he is being um, pursued by two other strange guys. So also this is Clary's first introduction to the Shadowhunter world and she is very strangely accepting of it. Like when Simon comes in and can't see the other people that she can see, she just kind of weirdly accepts automatically that he can't see it. Um, and that did bother me a few different times throughout the book that it seems like she's just weirdly accepting of things that should be shattering her reality. But we do find out that all of her memories of the magical world are being blocked and if that's the reason why she can just accept things so easily because it's just on a some sub on some subconscious level i think that actually makes a lot of sense so i think that might be a good explanation for why she can just quickly adapt to the magical world and accept it um is because on a subconscious level she's already aware of all this so then the next day, Clary gets into a fight with her mom because her mom wants to leave um, for the rest of the summer and go go somewhere out in the country, I think. And Clary's pissed because she wants to stay and she wants to attend her art classes that she paid for. And so she goes away with Simon to a coffee house to watch their friend read poetry. And anyways, I really liked, I really, really love Simon. He is like my favorite character. Aside from maybe Luke, they're both up there for me. I love, love Simon and Luke. And I love Simon because the sass is so strong with him and his sarcasm and his lines are just fantastic. <laughs> I, I had to write some of them down because he's just very quotable. Um, but yeah, so I love him. And I really liked this scene because we get a sense that Clary actually does like Simon, which again plays with my expectations a little bit because typically you would think that he would just be sort of the friend zoned guy who she never develops feelings for, maybe she never realizes she has feelings for. And it's kind of like that, I think it's a little bit more obvious because she starts to feel twinges of jealousy, like when uh, a girl is asking if Simon is her boyfriend when he steps away from the table to get them drinks or something and she's very uncomfortable. So I like that, that it starts out kind of establishing that Simon, or that Clary does kind of like Simon. Um, I think that's important and I really, I know that Clary is probably going to end up with Jace even though it was revealed that they're siblings, which I don't buy. I don't think that they're actually siblings. I think that that thing will get resolved. Uh, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. But anyways, I think she'll end up with Jace, which is kind of disappointing. I didn't like him in the beginning, but he did kind of grow on me. But I still prefer Simon because he is her best friend and he is so loyal and so sweet and appropriately sarcastic. And I love him. He is so awesome. And I just want them to end up together, even though I know it probably won't happen. But anyways, uh... In that scene in the coffee shop, he comes back and it seems like he's about to reveal that he has a crush on her or is in love with her or something like that. Um, but then he gets cock blocked by our patron saint of bad boys, Jace. Um, and it's just, he is the worst. I don't like Jace sometimes, especially when he is cock blocking my favorite character. <laughs> so anyways, Jace shows up at the coffee house and they talk and he's trying to convince her about uh, the fantastical world that he thinks she's a part of. Her mom calls all panicked. She runs home, gets attacked by a demon. 
Um, Jace saves her, brings her to the Institute, and when she wakes up, she meets Hodge, and Hodge and Jace break down the Shadowhunter world for her. I'm kind of glossing over this because I don't have too much to say about any of that, other than I really want to visit their library because it sounds amazing. So then Clary and Jace go back to her apartment to see if they can track down any clues for what happened to her mom or um, I think at this point they know about the mortal cup so maybe maybe they were looking for where she could have hidden the mortal cup mortal cup I don't know uh, then they run into Madame Dorothy who reads their tea leaves and that was really interesting because it sort of foreshadowed the fact that Jace would fall in love with the, with the wrong person aka his sister and then Madame Dorothy reveals that she has a portal and Clary just jumps through. <laughs> like, I think, I guess it's idiotically courageous of her to <laughs> just jump through the portal. I mean, she doesn't know where it's going and she doesn't know how portals work, but okay, you do you. But luckily the portal takes her to Luke's house where they run into Simon who's been staking the place out and this part made me so happy that Simon gets to be pulled into this fantastical world as well uh, right along with Clary because that means he gets to be along for the journey and as you know as I've said many times I love him he has some of the best lines so I'm really happy that he got pulled into the story and wasn't just sort of left behind in the mortal world I'm glad that he gets to be along for the journey with Clary. So they break down the whole thing for Simon and then they sneak into Luke's house and they eavesdrop on Luke telling a couple shadow hunters who work for Valentine that he doesn't know where the mortal cup is and he doesn't care what happens to Jocelyn. And I knew from the get go that this whole scene was BS. I knew that he, from what I knew about his character, he'd been around forever. He was okay with just being Jocelyn's friend even though he clearly loved her and he pra he was he was basically a father to Clary I was like there's no way that a guy who has stuck around this long doesn't care I knew he cared I knew he was trying to act like he didn't because he was working on a plan and he needed to keep Clary at arm's length um so I saw all that coming but the werewolf thing I did not see coming so that was a good one <laughs> So then they go back to the Institute and Simon meets Isabel and seemingly instantly falls in love with her, even though we find out that he was actually trying to make Clary jealous. Two things. Don't ever make someone you're interested in jealous because that will usually backfire. Simon, you're going about this all wrong and it was a stupid plan. Second of all, I am predicting that Simon will end up with Isabel, which I think I might be okay with depending. I'm already starting to kind of like her character. I can see that she more is trying to figure out how to relate to people her own age because it's kind of explained that she doesn't have much experience with people her own age. And um, I'm really excited to see her grow as a character and get to know her better. I'm really excited to see the friendship between her and Clary Blossom as it's kind of hinted at at the end of this book. So. Um, if her character keeps going in a positive direction and and if I'm right and she ends up with Simon, I think I'd be okay with that. Then they go talk to Hodge about Valentine and we find out more about Valentine's fascist beliefs and we also find out that um, Jocelyn, Clary's mother, was married to Valentine and I honestly, I don't know if this is a thing, but I honestly want a whole book just about that relationship because I'm really intrigued. I wanna know how it started, how it ended, how Jocelyn found the courage to leave. I'm intrigued by all of this. So then we get into the whole thing where Hodge thinks that Clary has a block in her mind and she's repressing memories of the magical world. And they think that there could be useful information that uh, her mind is keeping from her. And so they go to see the Silent Brothers who honestly reminded me of Dementors with like the hoods and the fact that they look like death under the hoods. I think, I mean, I would posit that uh, Cassandra Clare took inspiration from the Dementors in Harry Potter and twisted it in her own way to fit her own narrative, which I think is a good example of taking inspiration from something and um, twisting it to apply it to your own, your own narrative. So yeah, I like that. Unfortunately, the Silent Brothers can't help 
Clarion, they have to go to the person who originally put the block in her mind, Magnus Bane, who I really enjoy. He is all the right kinds of extra. And his brief backstory was really interesting. I do believe that there is a book about him. Maybe there's a few books, but I think I saw something the Bane Chronicles um, at my local library. So I'm curious to check that out at some point because I would love to read more about him. Um, I'm sure he'll show up in the other books, but I don't know. But anyways, um, I really liked him. I don't like that he basically mind raped her for the past, what, 13 years. Um, but I more blame her mom for choosing to do that to her than I blame him. He was just doing what he, you know, was paid to do. Um, I am really curious for Jocelyn to wake up from her coma because we don't really know her. We get one scene with her and then the rest of the book, everything we learn about her is all secondhand information. And a lot of her decisions um, that she's made throughout Clary's life are really frustrating and I would really like to get her perspective. So hopefully at some point in the book she wakes up and I can get an explanation that isn't dumb. <laughs> so while they're at the party at Magnus Spain's, uh, Simon gets turned into a rat and accidentally taken away by some vampires and Jace and Clary have to go after him and save him. So this was the point where I started to kind of like Jace because it became very clear that he cared about Clary and was willing to do anything to, you know, he was willing to do anything for her, basically. Um, and I think a little bit earlier than this, we get the backstory of him and his father gifting him a falcon for his birthday and he trained the falcon and, and learned to love it. And as soon as he trained it, his father killed it. So I swear I've heard that story before, but anyways, that just was really heartbreaking. And so it, it made him a little bit uh, more sympathetic to me, I guess. And so I started to like him at this point, even though I still prefer Simon. Um, I can tell that he, he genuinely cares about Clary. And so that's really sweet. So then we get the set up for the love triangle that I feel is going to be happening throughout this series. Um, they come back to the Institute and Clary is struggling to fall asleep. Simon comes in to talk to her and um, then falls asleep in her bed. Jace comes to take her on a picnic for her birthday. They hang out, then they're making out outside her bedroom and Simon uh, walks in on them um, and miscommunications and misunderstandings ensue and um, Simon reveals he's in love with Clary and it was really disappointing to read that Clary was just more confused than anything. I, I guess it makes sense but I, I like I said I think it's pretty clear that she does have some sort of romantic feelings for Simon just from the way she reacts to him and the way she reacts to the idea of other girls being interested in him or him dating other girls. Um, so that was frustrating to read, but um, yeah, that, there was the setup for the love triangle there, and I, I think we know where I stand, but we'll see if that changes as the books progress. So then Clary goes back to her room, sulk draws for a little bit, has an epiphany, realizes where her mom has probably hidden the mortal cup. They go to Madame Dorothy's to retrieve it, and this scene made me do literal fist pumps, and my... My roommate was like, what is happening? And I had to explain to him that it was happening in my book, but oh my gosh. So they're fighting that that really powerful demon, great, great, greater demon, higher demon, I don't know what it's called, I can't remember. They're fighting that demon and they're all about to lose and they've all got their butts kicked. And Simon, freaking Simon walks in with a bow and arrow and I knew this was gonna happen as soon as they introduced the bow and arrow, but he comes in like a freaking boss and shoots out the skylight and defeats this demon. And, oh, my man Simon, I, I'm so happy. And I love that he got to be part of the action. He got to defeat the demon. They all couldn't do it. They needed him. He's awesome. <laughs> and I loved it. So then we get to the betrayal um, after they get back to the Institute and it, it's revealed that Hodge is betraying them and he delivers the mortal cup to Valentine. And honestly, I kind of suspected early on that Hodge was not someone to trust. 
but I hoped that I was wrong because I actually liked Hodge a lot and I thought um, I really liked him as the role of mentor and I wanted him to continue to be their mentor throughout the series. Um, I feel like that'll be a missing piece now and that makes me really sad unless he can somehow redeem himself, but I doubt it. So yeah, unfortunately he ended up betraying them and uh, it was just, didn't want it to happen, but I kind of figured it was gonna happen. But Cassandra Clare totally redeemed herself by bringing Luke back in. And I, I know I've talked about it before, but I love Luke so much. I think he is so great. And I love his relationship with Clary. I love that we got to see more of it. And, you know, I love that it was revealed, even though I knew that he was just lying and he really had a plan and was going to save Jocelyn. And because he is awesome. Um, and I really love that, you know, he is her real father. He is the one who helped raise her and has taken care of her and loved her and protected her. And I love that we have that relationship in this book. And I love that it bothers Valentine because I kind of expected him to, you know, be sort of indifferent um, to the fact that, you know, she didn't give a crap about him, even though uh, he, he, Valentine just expected her to be loyal to him because he's her biological fire, father. He clearly has no understanding of family or loyalty or love. So it's really amazing that Jocelyn fell in love with him. Again, I really want to read about that relationship so I can figure it out and understand it. But anyways, um, I really like that it seemed to bother him though. Like, you expect him to just feel sort of indifferent when she doesn't side with him, just like, oh, well, whatever. But you could, it's kind of described that it hurts him a little bit and it makes him angry. And that makes me happy. Because even though we don't know too much about Valentine yet, we've just got a, sort of, I guess, the foundation. I mean, I, I feel like I don't know that much about him. I only have the foundation for um, who he is and what he wants, you know, what he's about. Um, I already hate him because we've gotten enough information about him to hate him and he is the worst. And so I'm glad that um, that, hurt, that hurt him a little bit. So <laughs> now we're at the elephant in the room where it's revealed, again, I, I brought this up before, but it's revealed that Jason and Clary are brother and sister. Um, and like I said before, well, so I, I knew that this twist was coming. I had been, this had been spoiled for me years ago when I had started reading in high school. So I, that was basically the only thing I knew about this book. Um, and like I said, I don't buy it. I don't think that they're actually brother and sister. I think it'll get revealed later that it was all a lie or a trick or, or something. I don't know. But I don't think they're actually brother and sister because I do think they're supposed to end up together. Um, that is some Star Wars level crap though. Um, the, reading those final scenes, I was really impressed with, with that final confrontation scene. It felt very Star Wars level um, and just felt very epic and shocking, it, even though I knew it was coming. Um, I still really enjoyed it. And yeah, I'm curious to see what happens in the next book and how they navigate going from feeling romantic towards each other to... Uh, thinking that they're siblings. So yeah, I should probably start wrapping this up. So um, in conclusion, I really enjoyed this book. I had a lot of fun reading it. I wasn't sure what to expect because I know a lot of people put this book on their sort of guilty pleasure lists, um, which doesn't necessarily communicate quality when it's on those kinds of lists, but I had a really good time and I really enjoyed it. And I know that a lot of people, there, a lot of people who love Cassandra Clare, their favorite series is typically um, the in, uh, Infernal Devices. Yes, the Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, Clockwork Princess, those books I know are probably the most beloved out of Cassandra Clare's books, unless the new ones are, and I don't know. I think the, the Infernal Devices is the more beloved series. Anyways, I'm really curious to read those books because people love them so much. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to read these books in the order that Cassandra Clare recommends, which is reading the first three 
Mortal Instruments books, then reading the Infernal Devices, then reading the last three of the Mortal Instruments, and then I think it's the new books and the other spinoffs. I don't remember. I just remember the first three, then the Infernal Devices, then the last three of the Mortal Instruments, and then I guess we'll we'll see where I go from there. But I am currently working on the next book. I'm going to be continuing on with this series. Um, so thank you so much for watching this video. I post videos every Wednesday and Sunday. I'll see you next time. Bye.